Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Seniors. On this edition, Senior Walks in the Parks have started, and what a great way to start your morning. It was Senior Day at the Detroit Zoo, and Cable 15 was there. And we drop into the annual Senior Vendor Fair. You name it, and we may have it here on Spotlight on Seniors. Spring is finally here, and it's time to get out and explore our great Southfield parks and public art with a weekly morning stroll with friends. Each walk begins with a series of stretches led by a physical therapist from Surgeon's Choice Medical Center to help everyone get ready for the day's walk. The group leaves from the Parks and Recreation Building at 8 a.m. A healthy snack and a bottle of water is provided. Well, I, I became a new grandmother for the first time, so I, I retired after 40 years with New York State, and I'm here taking, helping, my, helping taking care of, of my new three-month-old granddaughter. I came last July, and I did the walks last summer. We did it the month of July. I did those, and then I, this is, and I've done these. So this is my second year doing it. We got something in the mail. And, and she showed me this and she said, Ma, you might be interested in this. And I, we got it, she got it through the mail and I read all the interesting things that they do. And I said, since, I said, this would be good because I'm a senior citizen. And so I said, this might be interesting. And I really like it. There's a lot of good things here. I've done a lot of nice things here. Florence came to Michigan not knowing very many people. She says the senior center has made her feel welcome and more at home. You know, I came here from New York. I didn't know, I knew a few people here because I visit, but I've met some wonderful pe people here and I've made friends and everybody's really nice. And, and, and who's especially nice is the director. She'll come and sit, make sure we're on, on the bus. And I like, very, very nice. People are very nice here. This is a good program. It keeps people busy. I enjoy the walks. I enjoy the trips. It's really nice. I mean, I've met nice people and you, they t it's really, it's, and they have the inside track. Like if you have a bed, if the wind is terrible, I've been walking in the inside track all winter. I go to inside the one in the center. So I really like it. It's been a great experience. John Robertson was raised in Lathrop Village. His parents moved there when he was two years old. He also attended Southfield schools. He is a social worker at an area hospital. Uh, basically through a brochure from the Southfield government that was sent to our house, uh, talking about these exercise programs and I have some time in the morning, so let's go for a walk and enjoy more about Southfield as a city and what uh, Southfield has to offer. Yeah. I've done all of them. I'm happy to be here. This is the last one. I miss them when it, uh, it's going to be over now after four weeks. Uh, basically at the Berg and seeing the uh, museum highlighting uh, Southfield history and then at the Mary Thompson Farm and then last mm -hmm. week looking at all the sculptures uh, primarily in the Evergreen Civic Center area. And now at the Red Pole Park, very exciting to see all the sculptures. Glad that uh, the city of Southfield is promoting art. That's very important. We had visitors from Kathy Frisia Parks and Rec in the Walk in the Park series. It's, uh, they were at the Berg last week and uh, the Town Hall Museum. And so we had this event here today, this morning. And uh, several people came and toured the Mary Thompson House and they looked at the historic gardens. We're working on the historic gardens with the Southfield Parks and Garden Club. This is a great event because the visitors get to see how Mary Thompson lived back in the day. Uh, she was born in this house in 1871 and then she died here out in the fields with her sheep in 1967. Uh, they get a sense of what the history is because Mary uh, sold at half market value the property that the city hall and the go golf course and the library sit. And uh, the senior gardens uh, behind us are, was bequeathed in her will so that she, so that senior citizens could actually plot and plant vegetables and flowers if they couldn't do it at their homes. Well, I think different uh, walks have had different highlights, especially when the, at the farm, seeing the Pioneer family, that was a couple of weeks ago and then last week, just walking around the library, uh, seeing some of the artwork around the library and on Evergreen. Again, I'm glad that they brought art from Northland Center to uh, install like the whale and the, you know, the uh, the boy and the bear. I mean, these are like iconic to 
the city of Southfield and to Northland when I grew up here seeing those. The early morning senior walks will most likely pick up again in October. But don't let that discourage you from starting your own walking program right now. And exciting to be here. I didn't realize there are 65 pole poles here and the fact that they're made of wood. So DTE uh, made a great installation. That's exciting to be here to see this work of art now up close. I think that makes a difference seeing things that are up close. I think it's very important whether it's art, a sculpture, or murals, uh, it makes life more enjoyable and to see the colors on display and uh, the uh, creativity of different artists really highlights what each person has as far as enjoying it and or else doing it. It's exciting. The more the better. If you're interested in a tour of the Mary Thompson House, you can contact the Southfield Historical Society at Historic Southfield at gmail.com. Also, the Town Hall Museum at the Burke Historical Park is open Tuesday evenings in July and August for gazebo concerts. There's just something about visiting a zoo that makes everyone feel like a kid again. To encourage people of all ages to unleash their inner child, the Detroit Zoo hosted Senior Day. Senior citizens residing in Macomb, Oakland, and Wayne counties were invited to enjoy a special day at the Detroit Zoo. Senior Day featured free admission for seniors, tram tours, zookeeper talks, and a senior resource area full of vendors and a relaxing bingo game. We're just out here with, I'm just out here with my family. Um, beautiful day, love coming to the zoo and making memories. Oh, we were here last year. Um, I think I probably saw it as a Facebook event. That's, well, we just uh, like the ambiance and it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful yeah. day, you know. Yeah. Often we come and <laughs> the weather ain't that great. But <laughs> today's a fantastic day. Yeah. Well, this is as far as you've gotten us to the camels because there's going to be a talk at 11.30. Um, and then there's some other talks as we go on. One at the Grizzly and one someplace else that we're, we're aiming for. Yeah, trying to educate ourselves a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we went to the Otter House and there's no otters. <laughs> yeah. We went to the Beaver House. Yeah, and there are no beavers. No beavers. <laughs> but we know the camels are going to be <laughs> here because the they're going to talk about them. <laughs> for those of you who are into cuddlier animals, the Detroit Zoo has a family of red pandas. This near-extinct mammal has received a lot of public attention recently, and Senior Day was the perfect opportunity to learn more about these rare, bushy-tailed mammals. Even if you've been to the zoo before, there are new exhibits to see. Well, we want to see all of the neat animals. We haven't been here in, in decades. And so, plus, of course, this is Senior Day. So we're taking advantage of that. And over here, we just noticed a camel with her, her little baby. And over there's a reptile house, which is unbelievable. All the different kinds of snakes. Not that I'm fond of them, but. <laughs> and, and tortoises and all that. Very good. That penguin house was really fascinating. Crowded with people, but <laughs> fascinating and that uh, amazing how they can swim so easily and different kinds, different sizes and very active and we found out that they can hold their breath for 10 minutes underwater. So I thought, wow, <laughs> that's pretty good. Just to say they maintain it well, the grounds are neat and clean, they, they have well-marked buildings, good staff, and today, for seniors, we get free soft drinks, so, hey, not bad. The Detroit Zoo has over 125 acres of naturalistic habitats for more than 2,000 animals, from anteaters to zebras, and features award-winning attractions. The zoo's newest attractions are two African lionesses. Three-year-old sisters from the Buffalo Zoo have joined the Detroit Zoo's lion's den. Asha and Amira are settling in well in their new home. This summer, zoo visitors will be able to watch them hanging out together. The lion habitat is also home to female Erin, estimated to be about 18 years old, who was rescued from a junkyard 
in Kansas in 2009. The average lifespan for lions is 17 years. As we wandered around the zoo, we saw amphibians, birds, invertebrates, and mammals. We made sure to visit the Holden Reptile Conservation Center, and there we saw over 70 different species of reptiles and watched them slither or crawl behind their large glass enclosures. Well, we walked in the door and we were greeted very nicely and we've looked at the new uh, Polk um, Penguarium, <laughs> right? And we've seen the new beaver exhibit and walked through the reptile house and I was showing my dad the new baby camel that made front page news <laughs> in Royal Oak. Fantastic, I think this is great. Just look at the turnout. You know? mm -hmm. Zoos have a profound responsibility to all of the animals in their care including a commitment to ensuring great lifelong welfare. The staff at the Detroit Zoo care for and about each individual animal through every stage in their lives. As we celebrate Senior Day at the zoo, we honor both our human friends and animal friends in their golden years. For the animals at the Detroit Zoo, this includes Kintla, a 33-year-old grizzly bear, Bubbles, a 46-year-old chimpanzee, Nicknack and Giovanni, 23-year-old miniature donkeys, Homer, a 25-year-old Hoffman's two-toed sloth, and Lily, a 26-year-old Przlowski's horse. The Southfield Vendor Fair was put on by the Senior 50 Plus Center and was very well attended. Over 50 vendors from the AARP various senior living centers Easter Seals medical supply dealers, and volunteer organizations looking for assistance. Well, I'm with the Area Agency on Aging 1B. I'm the Communications and Outreach Specialist. So I'm out in the community promoting the services that we offer to older adults, adults with disability, and caregivers. We are um, one of the oldest organizations all about helping seniors. So we try to make sure seniors um, are able to live independently in their home for as long as they would like to. So we offer a lot of in-home services and we just offer resources to older adults, but then also to caregivers that are also caring for them and adults with disability. Yes. Well, we get a lot of calls about transportation options, affordable housing for seniors, in-home care, so you know a senior may actually be able to still live independently but may need help with someone to just come and help and take care of personal needs or housekeeping, things of that nature. So we get a lot of questions for that and just um, resources and referrals uh, just to help them to live independently really. Well, if anyone would like to connect with us, we're located right in Southfield. We're on Northwestern Highway in Franklin. We cover six counties, including Oakland County. They can call us directly. It's 800-852-7795 or go to our website, which is aaa1b.org. Erlene Trailer Neal is a member of the Commission on Senior Activities, known as COSA, and is active in the Southfield senior community. Southfield does not have a senior department per se. What we do is advocacy for seniors, and we try to be able to be a resource for them, whatever their needs may be. We're part of, we're working with AARP on the age-friendly communities project, and specifically, we have been, COSA, which is the Commission on Senior Adults, have been holding community conversations throughout the past year so that we could find out what the needs of the seniors are. There are eight different domains that we cover. Now, I am chair of the housing domain. So in particular, I can talk about that today and talk about the things that we are offering today for housing, on home repairs, home improvements, and what home fit projects or apparatuses may be needed for your home to help you to be able to stay where you are, to age in place. So we also have information on our table in regards to COSA, the Southfield Commission on Senior Adults. And we'd love for people to take a look at that, find out what we're doing, find out who we are, and how they can either join in and, and be a part or just give suggestions and let us know what your needs are. And also, uh, information on transportation, 
over there, which is also part, one of the domains that we're covering. And we have brochures on that over there also. So we have information that covers from the state of Michigan, Oakland County, and Southfield. So it really is a, a great source today. I'm looking around and I am just so pleased to see all of this information that is here that can benefit us, and I say us, as seniors here in the city of Southfield. We will continue to have community conversations throughout the coming year also in different parts of the community. We'll go to them this time instead of them coming to, a, a, to us or to a larger kind of forum. We'll, come to, we'll go to them and we'll find out what the needs are. But that's how we've been able to address the things that we're covering so far. It's because the seniors have let us know when we have these community conversations what their needs are. The Photography Guild is one of the oldest camera clubs in the country and its reputation for print and digital excellence continues today. Well, we are a group of uh, professional and amateur photographers from all skill levels, and we uh, compete all over the world, nationally and internationally, locally, and we also teach photography, open to anyone. Our dues is uh, $35 a year, and uh, you become a competing member. We go from beginners to advanced. And many of us are professional photographers in our own particular specialties. Well, I do small product advertising and architectural. We have a member here who teaches Photoshop at the college level. We have members here that do portraitures, um, Various different degree specialties in photography. Some do nature, some do portraits, some do weddings, uh, schools. Uh, we, we, have, we have someone who can professionally do pretty much anything you can imagine photographically. Southfield affords many opportunities to find things to photograph. Just take a look around. Oh, well, we like the, uh, the library. Uh, the library, the grounds out there with the Southfield emblem is very nice. And uh, we, uh, the Berg Center is another one of our favorites. As a matter of fact, that's where we meet at, at the Berg Center Church. Ronald says they encourage all ages to come out to their meetings. They are free and held at the Berg site. If you would like to join the group and participate on a more personal level, dues are $35 a year. World Medical Relief has been serving the sick and poor locally, nationally, and internationally since 1953. Their mission is to facilitate the distribution of surplus medical resources where they are needed. As such, their programs have both a local, national, and international focus. Goods are distributed in a non-discriminatory manner, without regard to race, color, gender, religion, nationality, or political beliefs. Oh, it's an old charity. It was uh, started in Detroit in 1953 by a woman named Irene Aubelin. And um, she saw a story on uh, television, you, you know, the power of media, right? And about an orphan in Korea. And it just really touched her heart and she felt that she had to do something. And so she started collecting baby supplies and to send this to this orphan. And then a letter came back from a nun who, where, you know, who was housing this orphan saying, we have 400 orphans like this, can you please send us more? So real soon the mission became more of a medical mission because a lot of missionaries across the world were sending her uh, requests for medication, for supplies, for instruments. And that's what we still do till this day. We do a whole lot of different things, but um, we are an international humanitarian agency. We collect and distribute medical supplies, equipment uh, to countries that are really in need across the world. And we do this with the help of volunteers. 
and then we have several local programs, for instance, affordable prescriptions for people who cannot afford them elsewhere, um, durable medical equipment like wheelchairs, shower chairs, uh, medical supplies, adult briefs and bed pads, um, liquid nutrition and ostomy supplies. But last year, for instance, we shipped a lot to Yemen, but we also shipped to Kenya, Tanzania, um, Haiti, uh, Philippines, different countries, you know, they have to go through a very specific application process and if they qualify, um, then we ship to them. In pursuing their mission, the board of directors, volunteers and staff seek to relieve human suffering, demonstrate respect for all customers, clients and patients, collaborate with community organizations collectively to provide services to those in need, and maintain a proactive approach to improving services provided. We really appreciate the city of Southfield and putting on this event for seniors. And we would really like more Southfield seniors to be involved with World Medical Relief. It's great to volunteer at World Medical Relief. You make a lot of friends. Uh, we have a wonderful cafeteria where people take a break after some sorting time. And you really would make a difference with with your time. You would be sorting medical supplies, uh, making sure that there's no expired supplies being shipped, um, and um, work with other people, a lot of young people too, to um, make sure that these supplies don't go to the landfill, but are being used elsewhere where they are really needed. And just last year alone, we kept almost a million pounds of items out of the landfill. So volunteering at World Medical Relief is, you know, you're being a good humanitarian, but you're also taking care of the earth. So please come, uh, call us, 313-866-5333. Also on our website, worldmedicalrelief.org. If you are a senior in Southfield, you're lucky. This is a great community. Before we close, we would like to remind you of a few special events that take place to put on your calendar. Tuesday, June 25th is a special performance by Kimmy Horn at the Southfield Public Library. You won't want to miss that one. Wednesday, June 26th, family fun and safety night on the front lawn from 5 until 9 p.m. with movies under the stars. On Friday, July 5th, Come and see the Sun Messengers on the City Hall lawn. I remember the Sun Messengers. The Half a Buck Cafe is open Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from 8.30 a.m. until 10 a.m. in room 112 of the Parks and Rec building. Join us for unlimited coffee for just 50 cents and pastries an additional 50 cents each. Walking, it's available year round in the Southfield Pavilion unless otherwise noted. St. John Providence Hospital visits on the third Wednesday of the month from 8 until 10 a.m. to conduct blood pressure checks. Well, that's all for Spotlight on Seniors today, but you can find other editions and related programs on our YouTube and Facebook channels. If you have ideas or suggestions for topics to cover, feel free to contact us at 248-796-4508 or on our Facebook page at Southfield Multimedia Services. I'm Dick Powell, your host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>